This week's Medi Composer, Composer 101 tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading, leading reseller of video editing, editing production, production equipment, equipment for more than 25 years. years. Check out VideoGuys.com video for great com deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, software licenses subscriptions, subscriptions, and upgrades, and, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off, off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Avid Media Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, we're going to get in and we're going to introduce you to the editing interface inside of Avid Media Composer and we're really going to talk about the first window that you're introduced to and that is the project window and in this lesson we're going to talk a little bit about how to create bins and to get ready to start either importing, capturing or linking to footage so that you can start editing as quickly as possible. Okay, short introduction here, let's just get into Avid Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for my Windows friends out there. What's important to keep in mind is that we're always going to be using the most current version of Media Composer in our tutorials, and as of this recording, the most current version of Media Composer is version 8.2. Now once you've created a new project or you've selected an existing project and you say, okay, you're normally going to be presented with a setup that looks something like this. Now if you're brand new to Media Composer, it's important to understand what each of these three windows do. The most important window and sort of the, the core of your organization is the project window, which is located right here. Right now it's empty, but we're going to start populating that with bins in just a second. Again, like I said, the project window is where you're going to have all your bins and you're going to do all of your organization of all of your clips so that your edits run as smoothly as possible. Now to the right of the project window, we have the preview window and the sequence or record window. And in most cases, that's what you're going to be referring to them as. But in general, this window is referred to, you can see up at the top, as the Composer window. So if you hear me refer to the Composer window, this is what I'm referring to. And of course, it does house the Preview window and the Timeline or the Sequence window. Right below that, we have, of course, the Timeline, which is where you're going to get in and do all of your actual editing. Now, for this lesson, we're going to do most of our work right over here inside of the Project window because I want to get in and talk a little bit about bins and organization because organization really is the key to your workflow inside a media composer. You can be the fastest editor in the world, but if your organization is terrible, you're really going to run into trouble really quickly. And I have a way that I set things up, and this is something that I've learned through years of experience that has never failed me up until this point as far as staying organized. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about creating bins inside of Media Composer. And to do that, there's actually three ways that we can do that. We can simply right click on the project window, we can come down and say new bin. What we can also do is say new bin right here. What we can also do is simply say file new bin, or of course the shortcut as you can see is command and N on the Mac, control and N for all of my Windows friends out there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new bin by simply pressing command and N on the keyboard. Now as soon as I do that, you're going to see a new bin has appeared and it's also been added to my project window over here as you can see. What I can also do is name the bin. What I'm going to do is simply call this clips. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to call this blue clips. And you're going to see why in just a second. Okay. So what I'm going to do is call this blue clips. I'm simply going to say enter. And as soon as I do, you're going to see that this bin has now been updated over here to be called blue clips. Now what's important to keep in mind as well is that anytime you close a bin, that bin will automatically be saved. Now we're going to get a little bit more into the settings in a later tutorial, but I do want to point out the bin settings and where you're going to want to get in and set them because that's really where your autosave is going to be put for your bins. And what is autosave? Well, autosave is the amount of time in between saves that's going to happen as your bin is open. So basically, for example, let's say you have your autosave set to be every two minutes. As you're editing, what's going to happen is Media Composer, literally like in the snap of a finger, is going to save all of the open bins. So this way, you don't have to worry about ever having a system problem or a crash or something like that, and you lose your information. Now, to find all of your settings, you'll see right at the top of the project window, we have the settings button. I can simply click on that, and inside my settings button, I have a settings for bin right here. Now, I'm just going to get briefly into this. Like I said, we're going to talk more about this in depth in a later tutorial. Most important thing, right at the very top, autosave interval, we're going to set that to be every five minutes. Obviously, you can set that as quick as you want. In most cases, I don't need to set anything shorter than five minutes. I think that's pretty good. Like I said, we're going to get in and talk more about this when we talk about settings 
in a later tutorial. All I'm going to do is now simply say OK, and this bin will now autosave every five minutes. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create three other bins here. Let's just say new bin, new bin, and new bin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the next bin green audio. I'm going to call the next one red graphics. And the last one I'm going to call yellow sequences. Now I've done that for a reason that I'm going to show you in just a second, but really at the core of your workflow, for me at least, these are really the main four bins that I'm going to work with. Now depending on how big your project is, you might need to vary this a little bit. But if let's say you're working on a 30 second promo, in most cases having these four bins will essentially keep you organized, keep you on track, and get your edit done as quickly and smoothly as possible. Now what happens if you're getting into work on a bigger project? Well, really, you can get in and create as many bins as you want, but like I said, the important thing is to remember to stay organized. So maybe you're going to want to have a clips bin for camera footage. You're going, to, you're going to want to have a clips bin for archival footage. You're going to want to have a clips bin for something else. And what you want to do is you want to have those three bins, but you know what? What's going to happen is once you start having three bins of clips and 12 bins of audio and 15 bins of graphics, your project window is going to look pretty cluttered. Well, that's where we have the ability to get in and add folders to our project window. Now, you're going to see that we have the little drop down here. Now, I'm going to refer to them as hamburgers just because that's what I've always referred to them as, but they're actually called fast menus. I'm going to click on my little hamburger here, and you're going to see that we have some new options in here, of which one is to create a new folder. Now, if you're working on a bigger project, what I encourage you to do is to create some folders called clips, create another one called audio, create another one called graphics, and then create another one called Sequences. And you can see this is really, these four folders or four bins are really going to be the core of your workflow. If you're going to go with the folder method, if you're working on a bigger project, now you can create as many different clips bins as you want and basically organize them inside each one of these folders so that when anybody else steps into your project, if you happen to be working in an environment where there's multiple editors working on the same project, you'll see how really simple this is to keep things nice and organized, nice and concise, so that anybody can get in and get up to speed with the project as quickly as possible. Now, you'll see inside of the Fast Menu, if I drop it down, we do have a few other options, of which one being Open Bin. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, Kev, why would I want to have the option to open a bin when I could simply come in and double click on the bin just like that to open it? And that's true, you can open a bin that way, but in most cases, what you're going to do is be opening a bin from another project. And what you do in this case is you'd simply say Command and O to open a bin. Now, one thing that I do want to show you, and this is something that's important to keep in mind, what I'm actually going to do is hide Media Composer for a second. I'm going to come to the Mac drive, and I'm going to come into my Avid Projects folder located right here, Avid Projects. I'm going to go into the Media Composer 101 folder, and you'll see in here what I actually have is those four folders that I created with the bins in them right there. This is a little bit different than how you might be accustomed to working inside of Final Cut Pro 7 or inside of Premiere Pro where everything is contained inside that one project file. Media Composer doesn't work that way. Media Composer has different files or different actual bins and the project is really just a shell right here. The shell is just is really just that. It's a shell that's going to hold, or really a bucket that's going to hold all of these bins inside, and all of the information of the bins is actually located inside of each one of these four clips. A very different way to work. For example, if someone needed to see this bin that I had here, and I wanted to send it to them, I could just simply take this bin, zip it, and email it to them, and then And they'd literally have it in a matter of seconds as opposed to me having to send you know my entire premiere project or my entire final cut pro 7 project i for me find this a much more preferable way to work okay now like i said if i come back into media composer and i do command and o to open another bin what i could do and i'm just going to come down to a bin that i know that has or a project that i know has footage in it let's come into my stock footage folder here and i'm just simply going to choose my motocross footage here and you'll see now that I can get in and quickly take a look at all of the footage inside of this bin by taking a look at it in thumbnail view. Now again, like I said, we're going to get more in depth into bins in a later lesson, but I just wanted to show that to you quickly.
Now I'm just going to close this bin and I want to point out that every time you open a bin from a different project, it's not like if you say, oh, I really wish I had that motocross footage back again, that you have to, you know, command O, navigate back to that project, get that bin, open it again. You're going to notice that a new folder has appeared at the bottom of my project simply called other bins. What I'm going to do is twirl that down and you're going to see that I have that motocross footage bin now located as a link inside of my project. It's not physically that bin is, hasn't been moved into the project like I showed you when I went out to the finder level. It's just a link to this bin located inside of that stock footage project. Now, there's another great new feature that came about inside of 8.2 of Media Composer. I want to show that to you right now. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to open another bin here. I'm going to come up to my Avid Projects. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my project called Rampant Design Tools. I'm going to double click on it and I have a bin called 4K Flash Transitions. I'm just going to open it up. Now we're jumping a little bit ahead here, but I want to show you this new feature. You'll see that as I drag through, I have some flash transitions. Well, let's say I really liked this bin and I wanted to have these elements available inside of any project that I happen to open. What I could do is I could set this bin as what's called a favorite bin. Again, like I said, a new feature inside of 8.2 of Media Composer. Now, how do you set up a favorite bin? Well, it's actually very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select the bin that's open. Now that's important to keep in mind, the bin has to be open for this to work. With the open bin selected, what I'm going to do is simply, let's actually make sure I have the bin selected here. What I'm going to do is simply navigate up to bin and I'm going to come down and say add bin to favorites. Now as soon as I do, you're going to notice a new folder has now appeared at the top of the project simply called favorite bins. Now why at the top of the project? Well, if I come back to my settings, I come back to those bin settings, you're going to see right here that I can have my favorite bin show at the top of the project window or at the bottom of the project window. Now for me, I always like them at the top, but I wanted to show you that feature. It's a brand new inside of 8.2 and I'm going to show you another feature in just a second. Like I said, brand new inside of 8.2, the favorite bins feature. Very cool and very handy to have. Now, last but certainly not least, before I wrap this lesson up, I want to show you another great feature that has to do with bins inside of 8.2 of Media Composer, and that is the ability to find a bin very quickly. Now, you'll remember I called those bins red, green, yellow, and blue. Well, if I wanted to get in and find any bin that has been labeled, or as I like to say, tagged as being blue, that's because I typed blue in the name of the bin, all I need to do is simply come up here to the search window. I just need to type in blue and any bin that has been named with blue as part of the name is going to appear by itself inside of the project windows. So for example, if I came back, I typed in red, there's red graphics, yellow, there's yellow sequences, and uh, did I call something green? Yes, I did. Of course, green audio. Okay, now that's a very introductory look at creating bins and getting yourself organized inside of Media Composer. In the next lesson, we're gonna move along inside the project window, and I think we're gonna get in and we're gonna talk a little bit about settings, because really, after you start creating bins, settings are something that are very important that you're gonna wanna get in and know what you wanna get in and adjust before you start editing, so you have the smoothest editing experience possible. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I wanna thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.